Welcome back to React and Mobex lecture. From this time, we will start learning about React's components. First, let's talk about the concept of what a React component is. I will explain what is the props object among the main elements that make up the React component. In addition, we will also proceed with the simple example of using props. As this is the first time to create a component, I hope you will practice with it. So, let's get started. First, let's take a look at the concept of what a React component is. The React component is the most basic unit for the React UI. The user UI that consists of React. On the left, I drew an example when it said that the UI as shown in the picture on the left needs to be created. The unit is divided into component units. First, to determine which unit the corresponding UI is divided into. For example, the user details screen menu list and list items that make up the list are designed to be divided into components and then each component is produced. And this React component consists of a number of React elements. We basically see the component as a basic unit. You can understand that this component is made up of React elements. There are two ways to create this React component. One is class-based. The other is how to make it based on functions. There are two ways to make it based on a function. We are going to make a number of components based on a class by default. In the future, we will try to create a component based on function. Since this paradigm is a little different, we will learn one first and then look at the other contents together. Now. The code on the right is a simple example of creating component. As you can see, if we make a component based on a class, we will make it in a form that inherits the component class from this React, and we will look detail in it again in the next page. Components are the various elements that make up the screen. The element we are talking about here is function, style, Markup. When it comes to markup, it's a structure. When it comes to style, it will be CSS. When it comes to function, it means that part of JavaScript that receives user interaction. Now you can understand that these three elements are grouped into one component unit. When a user's UI exists, the UI is divided into parts, and each part element is grouped into one, as I said now, and the function, style, markup is grouped together. So we can use it much more easily from the point of view of reuse. As I mentioned earlier, I said that the way to create components is divided into two types. First is the class-based component and second is function-based component. The important thing here is that class-based components are stateful and the function-based class is stateless. So the difference between the class and the function is depends on if they have state or not. This is what we will talk about once again when we learn about the props and then state. So as this React keeps developing, there is also a hook that can be used as if it had a state when creating function-based components. Now that's what we will talk about again as we create function-based components. Now. I will show you a quick comparison with the code. Now, if you look on the left, you will create this component called customer. 
However, when creating a class-based component, it is made in the form of inheriting the React component. Class-based components that inherit React component must have a render method. This render method should return a React element. In other words, when returning, there is an important condition that the React element must be returned. Sometimes it returns a single element, and sometimes it returns a list of elements. By the way, we can basically think that it returns one element, and the code that you see right now is the code implemented in JXX. And the code implemented in JXS goes through the transcompilation later to create the react.create element function of the create element. Last time, I explained that everything will be changed to the form of react.create element function. Now, this content on this left is a simple example of creating a component based on this class. Now, there are two codes on the right side, and they're the same code, which is defines into a function and creates a component using the function or the class. One is a method using a general function. The second is that the two method of making using the error function of ECMA script 6 have the same operation, but only the form of the code has been changed. So when you think that the components of React right now are what matters, the most basic unit that composes the user UI when configuring the UI React is React components. You only need to understand that React components are made as class-based components with state or components based on stateless functions. Now, for the time being, we will continue to make components based on class for the time being. There are basic components that this class-based component has when it comes to creating a class-based component. The first is props, the second is state, and the third is life cycle. So from now on, we will look at the three contents in order from the props to the state and then the life cycle. Now, then let's look at the contents of props first. As you can see, props are defined by extending the component class of React. Class-based components automatically have props objects. So I'm going to talk about how to use props. It is explained that props are objects to which data transferred from the parent component is allocated at the time the component is created. Now to understand this, the first thing you have to think about is when we compose the screen. When composing the screen, I will think of simply making a list. Then there will be a list and there will be items in the list that makes up the list. Of course, list and list items I want to make as separate components. Of course, it is also possible to combine these two into a component, but the list will go in this way, but the external component including the list will also be a component. For example, the entire component containing the list, for example, will be called the app component. Now I'm simply spraying a list, but I made three components. There are three components. First is app component, which will contain as the whole. And the second one will be the list component, which will contain the list item component. So there are three components. You have to think about the relationship between these three components. Now, the relationship is not difficult. The app component will include the list component, and the list component will contain list items. There will be a component called app at the top, and this app contains a component called a list, and the list will contain list items and components in a number of lists. In other words, I will create an application screen with this structure where the app contains the list and the list contains the list items. Now, 
I want to give some data to the list that the app contains. Also, I want the list to pass specific data to the list item at the time of creation. In that case, the method passing this data, that is the props. If you look at it, you will see the code on the left for a moment. For example, the code in the box above, this is called app component. I'm going to create a component called customer in the component called app. And I define the array object called ID, name, orders like this, as if putting the element attribute of the HTML tag. Then, when defining the customer class included in the app, React when you create a customer that inherits from there is an object called props inside. So if you use this dot props, you can access it. What this means is I'm going to create a component called customer class, but this is a component object that inherits from React components. Then as soon as React.component is inherited from extends, this props exists in me. Then what exists in this props? The data that the parent component wants to pass and the data that is sent in this form are included in the props. If I want to get my ID, in that case, if you take out the value of this.props.id, you can get the email of kim.namsori.io. This is the props. There are important characteristics of props. From the customer's point of view, the props value cannot be changed. From the receiving point of view, it makes no sense to change the data stored in this prop from the customer's point of view. Of course, you can change the values here when data is delivered from the app's point of view. But it is unnecessary to change this data from the receiving point of view. So that's the reason why it's unchanged value. You can understand that when you receive it through props. If you create a component based on class, for example, extends react.component, there is a prop in that component. And what is included in this prop is that the data received from the parent component enters. Props are an element that we use very often in the future. So if you use it, you can easily understand that you're using it like this. Now let's continue with the next content on props. The next thing to look at is prop types. You can think of it as a separate library used when you want to verify this data when receiving data from an upper component as prop. What I mean is data is received from the upper component. When this data is received, it is put in props and receive it. However, from the perspective of the lower component, I want to verify what data this prop has to come. In the upper component, the data will be given in the form you want to give it. But a way to verify it in the lower component, I want to go through validation. As you can see on the right, the types that we can verify by specifying a type are array, boolean, function, number, object, or string. Prop types is used after verifying this, but in fact, I don't use prop types well right now. The reason is that when we work on a project with React, we basically use it with the language called TypeScript. So if you use TypeScript, you don't have to use prop types. Let's look at the related content in the next chapter. Let's look at what it means to verify with prop types. The part where the customer class, the part where React the component that inherits the component from this React is omitted. We'll explain what happened while we actually proceed with the practice. 
You can understand that this code at the moment is React the component. I made a custom that inherits the component. So this component called the customer will receive data from the parent component. By the way, I want to verify this. So using a property called prop type, the ID must be a string. The name is also a string, and orders are in array. However, when the parent component gave data, the orders sent the data directly in the form of a string, not in the form of an array. In that case, when you actually spray this component on the screen, the data comes out without any problems. But when you open up the developer tool, a warning pops up. Prop types is used like this. When it actually works, the compilation runs without any problems. Actually, the result is output. But if you use a prop types in the future, you can verify that a warning message is displayed. If you use TypeScripts, you can cause an error at compile time. So I don't use prop types frequently now. However, the reason why I explain prop types like this is that there may be cases where you can see the same code as you see as an example code. So if you look at that, you can understand that the prop types was something like that. You can understand that props are used when receiving data from the parent component that includes itself, and this prop can be accessed with this dot props by creating a class-based component, and this data accessed with this dot props. If you understand that the value is immutable because it's unnecessary to change the data, you've all understood this prop. Next time, I will go ahead with the first example of spraying a simple list using this prop. Now, this time I saw about props, please remember the basic concept of props that I mentioned it in this lecture, and I will see you again in actual practice coding next time. Thank you!